Hello and welcome to the first of the Monetary Policy Tutor to You online lessons. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at the purpose of monetary policy and what it attempts to achieve. So let's have a look at what is the purpose of macroeconomic policy. We are going to have a look at the different macroeconomic objectives. But before I reveal mine, I want you to see if you can recall the different macroeconomic objectives by the UK government. We are looking for seven in total. So if you pause the video and see if you can come up with seven macroeconomic objectives. OK, so you've had a few moments to think. See if we can come up with the same objectives. So first of all, steady growth. So this is the growth of real GDP. Remember, we strip out the effects of inflation and we're looking for real GDP to rise. A good rate of growth in normal circumstances would be around about 2% per annum. We are looking for low unemployment. So this is a rate of unemployment around between about, let's say, 4% to 6% unemployment, which would be suitable for a developed economy. We are looking for low inflation. But most importantly, we're looking for stable prices because stable prices allow certainty, which allows consumers to plan their spending and also for firms to plan their investment. We measure inflation using the CPIH measure in the UK, and we've got an inflation target of 2% plus or minus 1%. We are looking for a balance of payments current account balance. So remember, it's just the current account. We're looking to pretty much balance the value of imports against the value of, out, of exports. We are also looking to protect the environment. So looking for sustainability in our use of resources. An equal distribution of income. Note it's income and not, not wealth at this stage. So it's just looking for an equal distribution of income. And a balanced fiscal budget. So this is the government's budget over one financial year. We're looking for a balance between government revenue and government spending. Next, we're going to look at the types of macroeconomic policy. There are three main forms of macroeconomic policy that you will learn about in your A-level syllabus. Fiscal policy. Fiscal policy is any policy relating to government spending, taxation and borrowing. And this is led by the government, in particular, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, he will use the budget during March time of year and stand up and talk about the plans for government spending and taxation for the next financial year. Monetary policy, the uh, subject of this particular PowerPoint, is any policy relating to interest rates, the money supply and or managing the exchange rate. Sometimes students forget about the exchange rate because we haven't used it for many, many years as an active tool. But nevertheless, it is there. Monetary policy is led by the central bank, the Mon Monetary Policy Committee in particular, which is headed up by the governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey. Supply side policies are policies intending to increase the productive potential of the economy. In other words, we're shifting the long run aggregate supply curve to the right or we could be pushing the productive possibility, production possibility frontier outwards. So we're looking to be able to create more goods and services. And we can do that by either increasing the quantity or the quality of factors of production or both. And supply side policies can be free market, so we retract intervention, we, we reduce intervention and let the free market achieve these, or they can be interventionist, whereby the government would get involved and enter the market and perhaps have policies that manipulate the market. When considering monetary policy, there's a lot to think about. 
So we have to think about all the market interest rates, and there's more of that in the next PowerPoint. So we're not just concerned with one interest rate. We have to be aware that there's many, many different interest rates in the economy. Bank lending, a very, very important part of monetary policy. So we need the banks to be on side to be able to lend to businesses as the government or as the monetary policy requires. We're interested in the currency markets, what's happening to the value of the pound, what's happening to the value of the euro, the dollar, and looking at what's happening on Forex or the foreign exchange markets. We're concerned with inflation targeting. So we have mentioned before, we have a target rate of 2% CPIH. We're interested in the Bank of England, of course, because that's where the Monetary Policy Committee sits. And also we're interested in the European Central Bank, not only because in 2020 it's the transition year, so we are still working very much in tandem with the European Central Bank. But even beyond that, it's likely we're going to be working very closely with them because they're such a huge market that we export to and import from. And so what's happening monetary policy wise in the European Union will be very, very important to us. On the screen now is a lot of key terms that you need to know uh, about monetary policy. I am going to specifically talk about the bank rate, the second one down. So the bank rate or base rate repo rate. Let me just explain that a little bit. So as I said before, there is an awful lot of interest rates available in the economy, lots and lots and lots of different ones. But when you're talking about the Monetary Policy Committee's interest rate. We tend to refer to it as the bank rate. And just to make sure that the examiner knows you know what you're talking about, perhaps even give it the capitals like on this slide, capital B and capital R. It's also known as the base rate, but also the repo rate. And that's a short name, short a nickname for the repurchase rate. So it's the rate at which the Bank of England buys back government gilts and so forth. You don't need to refer to it as the repurchase rate, repo rate, as long as you use the bank rate or base rate. OK, if you pause the video, have a look through all those different key terms and then restart the video when you think you have got your head around them. OK, now we're going to move on and I'm going to set a little quiz for you. It's a one minute quiz for you. Some key terms. So a 60 second challenge matching the key terms with the correct meanings. Off we go. Three, two, one. Time's up, everybody. Time to reveal the answers. Here we go. Here are the answers. So hopefully you've managed to get them all right. Ten out of ten. And I shall see you shortly in the second part of this introduction to monetary policy video uh, on the online lesson.